Trina, and this is my non-spoiler series review over the Selection series by Kira Cass. There are five books total in this series, but there are actually two different parts to the series. There is the original trilogy that follows one character, and then there's a duology that continues the story 20 years later. The original trilogy consists of the Selection, the Elite, and the One, and the continuation duology consists of the Heir and the Crown. I'm going to start out by talking about just the original trilogy first. So what the premise that started this entire series is, is that this is a young adult dystopian romance. This world has different caste systems, so there's like the upper class and then like the lowest of the low class. And our main character, whose name is America Singer, which yes, that is a ridiculous character name, but she is from one of the lower classes and she is drawn from a nationwide lottery to go to the palace and compete for the love of the prince because their royal family has the same called a selection every time there is a male heir who's about to ascend the throne he's got to find himself a wife this is a lot like the bachelor or the bachelorette tv shows so yep it sounds cheesy and dramatic and that's because it is and there's a time and place for books like that and i really ate them up i don't remember how i found this series but I'm pretty sure that I had it in my head I was not going to like this at all and then I heard about either a good review or a friend recommended it to me and I picked the first book up and I could not put it down. I am a really slow reader so when a book can grip me and make me read the entire thing in a day or stay up all night long reading it, I love that kind of reading experience. So yeah, these books are pretty fluffy, there's not a lot to them, they don't explore some things that maybe a better quality book would explore. But this was a fun reading experience, and so I have a deep love for this series because of the experience that they gave me. All three books in the original trilogy gripped me the same way, and I had to stay up to finish these books because I was just obsessed. I could not put them down. As ridiculous as you think these characters are being, I had to flip the page and just do one more chapter and then another and then another until I was done with the book. So if you're looking for a series that will do that to you, this is that series. So with the first three books, I was always insanely gripped by them and I felt like the romance and the chemistry between the main character America and Prince Maxon was just really great. It was like really giving me all the feels and I just really wanted them to get together. However, there is a huge love triangle in this series and that is what drove me crazy about it. Especially in the second book, The Elite, America was just flip-flopping with her choice between these two guys that she wanted to be with. That did drive me really crazy when I was reading that book and I am one of the most tolerant people of love triangles. They don't bother me that much, but this one in particular really did. However, I couldn't put it down. I had to find out what was going to happen. Now, in hindsight, after I know how everything ended, I do feel like that love triangle served a purpose. It was there intentionally. It was there because Maxon was this prince in charge of selecting his wife out of like 35 girls, and I feel like the love triangle and giving America a second love interest was done in order to put some power back into her hands too. I think she needed to make an active decision about who she wanted to be with, and so I really appreciated that. So a big critique that a lot of people have of this series is the dystopian element is just really shallow. It's really light on the dystopian. And that is true. It's just kind of a backdrop. However, I feel like that dystopian backdrop was a necessary element for anybody to ever believe that it's okay to have a competition like this where you seriously are deciding the fate of your kingdom and who's going to lead your kingdom based on something that's set up a lot like The Bachelor. The third book, The One, does get a lot more into the government and the dystopian system because they're facing like these group of rebels who want to overthrow this class system so you do get some of the politics, but the romance is definitely the main focus of the series. I wouldn't hold its lack of dystopian elements against it because that just wasn't the point to me. I was really satisfied with the ending. I don't think that there needed to be the companion series with the heir and the crown. However, when you really like a series, you sometimes just really want to know more. The main strength of the heir duology, in my opinion, is that this time the main character, the point of view that we are following, is the princess in charge. She is the one doing the choosing, and so we have all these suitors, and and we don't know who she's going to choose, whereas in the original trilogy we were following a contestant who didn't have, you know, as much choice. With Edlin, there's like 30 options and you really don't know where she's going to go. So there was more mystery to it. I did enjoy seeing it from her side. The biggest critique that I would have of this duology is that there was not enough romance. And I know that Kira Cass is wonderful at creating romantic tension and like this whole will they want they thing, but in these two books there just was none of that. Like the final outcome was exactly what I wanted it to be and yet I just was not convinced of it at all.
all. I couldn't see it. I couldn't picture any kind of future for this. I felt none of the feels. And that was just a terrible feeling for me because I really was rooting for this thing to happen. And when it did, I didn't care because it was done so quickly without any development, without any tension having been built. So, you know, this duology was pretty dissatisfying to me. But that does not erase the fact that I really, really loved the first three books. Also, I don't think I mentioned this, but these last two books do show you the outcomes of a lot of the characters from the original trilogy. So if you just have a really strong attachment to these characters, you may see what happened to them 20 years later in these books. So that is a big reason to continue reading if you just wanted more of the characters that you loved before. So I want to do a little comparison of the first three versus the new two. One of the biggest critiques that everybody has about both of these are the main characters and how annoying they are. In my opinion, I do prefer America between the two girls, but I feel like Evelyn, her personality was exactly what a princess who had grown up in great privilege would have been like. Whereas America, who had grown up in poverty, she really wanted to stand up and be stubborn about the things she believed should have changed in their society. So I really feel like, you know, there was a lot of purpose to both of them being the way that they were. I don't dislike either of their characters. I think it's pretty clear that I definitely prefer the original trilogy in this series. I like Kira Cass's writing. I know that she can draw out tension and make you root for characters and make you frustrated. She's given me like a whole range of different emotions throughout the course of this series and that's something that I appreciate. So those are my thoughts over the selection series by Kira Cass. Overall, it's a series that I had a lot of fun with. You know, there's a time and place for the fluffy romances. So if you're just looking for something light and easy to read, I would recommend it. If you've finished the series and read The Crown, let me know what you thought of it. Were you satisfied with that ending? I look forward to talking to you guys and discussing this series further. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the comments. Bye!